Okay, dear students, welcome back to my channel. So I just have brought uh, today one important basic point, and that is how you can find the domain of a vector function. But dear students, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So let's see how we can find the domain of different kinds of vector valued functions. So the first one is a function f of t, which is given by 3 into t radical t minus 4i plus e to the power of t ln 6 minus tj plus t equals 8tk. So this is a vector valued function, as you see, because the output is a vector. So the inputs uh, here is a set of subset of uh, uh, real number. So how can we f find the domain of this vector valued function? So to find the domain of this vector valued, valued function, what you need to do is you have to find the domain of these components, the components, the square functions, okay? So we have to, we do have here three component functions. One is three times radical t minus four, and the other is e to the power of t ln six minus t, and the third one is t times cos eight t. So we need to determine the the domain of these three and then finally we will take the intersection of these domains so the intersection of these domains is going to be the domain for the vector function so the solution goes like this first the domain of radical t minus 4 as you know is uh, 4 to infinity because as you all know for this square to, to be defined the expression inside the radical should be greater than or equal to 0 so t minus 4 needs to be greater than or equal to 0 so moving forward to the right, you are going to have a C output greater than or equal to 4. So for whatever values you may take uh, as t greater than or equal to 4, uh, these, the first i, the x component can be defined, so you need to have this as one uh, set. And when you come to the second set uh, or the second domain, you need to consider the domain of now uh, ln of 6 minus t, even though it is, you see, we are having here e is a power of t, we don't need to consider that because the domain of e is a power of t set of all real numbers, that's why I just excluded that. We need to focus only on the domain of ln of 6 minus t. So the domain of ln of 6 minus t is going to be uh, six, uh, the case where 6 minus t is going to be positive because logarithmic function never takes negative as well as zero inputs. So the, in, the expression inside ln that is 6 minus t should be greater than zero. So in solving this, you can obtain t to be less than 6, so this is considered as a second uh, set. And what comes next is the domain for t times cos 8t, and as you all know, this is a set of all real number. So we are having now three domains, so uh, the vector function is defined if uh, at different values where you see the scalar functions are going to be defined. So we have to consider the intersection of these domains, okay? So when we take the intersection of these domains, the domain of the first one, scalar function, radical t minus 4, the second, the y component, and the last, the z component. So when we take the intersection of the, all these three, look, I just have brought the expressions I got. For the first, 4 to infinity, here I wrote. For the second, minus infinity to 6, here I have. And for the last minus infinity to infinity, all are labeled here. So we need to take the intersection of these three. Basically, the intersection of these three is going to be from 4 to 6. Inclusive 4, inclusive of 4, but exclusive of 6, as you see. So whatever values you may take for t here between 4 and 6, where 4 is included, but 6 is excluded, your vector function f of t can be defined. But if you take any value out of this interval, it will be... Uh, it will it, it won't it won't make f to be defined therefore the domain of your vector function is going to be a set containing t from 4 to 6 inclusive of 4 but exclusive of 6 good what comes next is you see number two it says find the domain of the following vector function so let's see that vector function here the given function is f of t equals to the power of t into radical minus ln t plus 1i plus 3 into radical t minus 1j plus 4 ln 16 minus t square k. So as usual, what you need to do is you have to find the domain of these three components, x, y, and uh, z components. So uh, we are having now uh, this one. So how can we find the domain of this function? So simple. What do you need to do with the following one? First, we have to find the domain of this um, you know, the square root of minus ln t plus 1. So as you know, the domain of this can be obtained by using uh, this approach. As can be shown, 
I don't know if this is uh, the case where the, uh, the expression inside the square root to be greater than or equal to zero. And this is, you see, one minus ln t greater than or equal to zero. So from this, uh, one minus ln t comes positive if ln t is less than one, as you know, less than or equal to one. So ln t less than or equal to one. So introduce e both sides. So when you introduce e both sides, t comes to be less than or equal to e. So t less than or equal to e is one possible. Uh, you see, the <coughs> domain. So we need to consider again the second one. And the second is 3 into radical t minus 1. So here also, you see, we have to consider the case where the expression inside the radical to be positive and close 0. And this happens when we take 1 to infinity. So we are now left with the third one, ln of 16 minus t squared. As I said earlier, this is a logarithmic expression. So the expression that's inside the bracket should be positive. So 16 minus t square needs to be, as you see, positive. So this happens when only if t is between minus 4 and 4, because you can do you can solve this as uh, 16 greater than uh, t squared. You can move this negative to the right and and try to observe the case where you see the difference can be positive and the difference comes positive if this the square the squared expression is you see, uh, less than 16, and that is uh, that happens when t is between minus 4 and 4. So we've got now uh, three different uh, sets here. So the intersection of these sets is going to be the final uh, output or the domain for the uh, given vector function. So we are having now 1 to infinity from the first one, and from the second from minus infinity to e, and the third 4 to 4, minus 4 to 4. So clearly, you can just try to analyze what the intersection of this is going to be. You can prepare a number line if you want. So finally, the final the final output will be 1 to infinity. So this shows you that whatever number you may place in place of t between 1 and e, your vector function is defined. But outside of this uh, interval, if you take a number, it will be meaningless, you see. Uh, so this is how you can find the what the uh, domain of a vector valid function. Now what comes next is the next one, which is question number three. Again, you are asked to find the domain of another vector function. Let you see this uh, uh, expression. This basically is a vector valid function, as you see. So uh, what comes next is uh, we have to determine the uh, domain of these three compo the scalar functions, component functions. One is this one is a power of t into one minus radical t squared minus three. So basically, what you need to know is the radical expression here inside this large inter inside this large integral. I mean, inside this large radical, we are having one minus radical t square minus three. So that has to be positive, including zero. So as you see, greater than or equal to zero is written. So now you can analyze this one. Look, the difference comes positive, or if the the, the left comes uh, to be uh, positive. Uh, or 0 if uh, radical t square minus 3 is less than or equal to 1. So this can come. Now what follows is we can have the following again. Look, this radical expression can't give negative output, so everything is going to be positive, and it's li it lies between 0 and 1. So we are having now 0 less than or equal to t squared minus 3 less than or equal to 1. I just have squared both sides, students. When you square both sides, you do have this one. Now what you need to do is you have to what uh, solve for t. So to solve for t, just add three uh, throughout. So when you add three throughout, zero plus three is three. Three is less than or equal to t squared, less than or equal to three plus one makes four. Now what's going to come is here is we can put radical both sides. And don't forget that negatives also should be taken into account, but we have to reverse the order when we take negative. So what comes now is this one. I just obtained this directly by putting radical both sides. So when you put radical both sides, radical 3 in 2 can come. That's why it's considered this. And when you consider the negative part, because as you see, this is a squared expression, you have to reverse these two and have negative in front. So whatever now t value you may take within this territory, you see the x component is defined. And when you come to the power expression, we are having here for the power of t, I mean, uh, this is not, yeah, this exponential expression, sorry. The domain of this is going to be uh, from minus infinity to infinity, set of all real numbers, because you are allowed to take any any number in place of t without any restriction. 
basically uh, the same is true in the case of e to the power of t that's why i just have ignored you see uh, this one i only focused at the radical expression so the domain now is a set of ordering number proceeding to the third we are having the domain of six ln minus t plus two because this is a third component as usual this minus t plus two should be greater than zero so solving for this it will be t uh, less than two so it will be minus infinity up to two as you see it will be from minus infinity up to two uh, whatever t value you may substitute here the third function can be defined but our main objective is to make uh, or to find the domain of the vector valued function f of t so there should be a value that can make all the components in, you know you know to, to be meaningful so for that we have to consider the intersection of all this so when we take the intersection of all this look at the beginning we do have minus 2 minus uh, radical 3 you mean radical 3 up to 2 and the second one is set of following number the third is minus infinity up to 2 so students you can prepare now a straight line and then you can analyze what the intersection is going to be obviously the intersection of this one is going to be uh, this one from minus 2 up to minus radical 3 union radical 3 uh, up to 2 exclusive of 2 but the others as they are so whatever number you may take and put there in our function or function can be defined but if you take a number outside of this it will be meaningless so the domain of a vector value function in short is nothing but it is a set containing values that make our function to be defined so you have to understand this sense